Hi, today I want to show you a really cool project built with Langchain, Dancer. I will show you how to set up the project, introduce you to some features and perhaps what interests you most, the architecture and thoughts behind it. I think it's extremely well implemented. So let's first start with the setup. To use Dancer, you have to clone the repository from Git. If you scroll down, you can see a feature list. So you can chat over documents and so on, but what I like most is the user authentication on the document level and also that you have the option to manage different connectors with a management dashboard and set up features such as live updating. That's pretty cool and I've never seen that in a project before. So to see how the setup works, we have to go to docs. It's here in the deployment section and here you can see that's the setup. You can use different commands. I will use that command which will build the Docker images from scratch. After cloning the repository, you can now see this is our project and we've got that deployment folder and inside here we've got the docker compose folder. This is the one we will use so we have to cd into that folder. So let's go to cd deployment and then cd docker compose. As you can see, see here we've got also the option to use Kubernetes to deploy it and I think that's very nice to not only run it here on a single computer but also run it on a Kubernetes cluster. So now I'm gonna just copy the command to set up Dancer. And now let's just copy that command in the terminal and that will take its time. I think about five minutes. For me, it should be faster because I already downloaded the images, but you have to wait a little bit now. Okay, I started the command again without the minus D flag so we can see everything what happens in the services here in the terminal and if we go to our browser, then on localhost and port 3000, we can now use Dancer. The first time you will visit that site, you will be asked for your OpenAI API key. Because I already did this, I'm not forced to answer that again. And if you want to change your uh, OpenAI API key, you can go here on the admin panel and then on OpenAI. And here you can enter your new API key and delete the old one. So before we start with adding data to our vector store, first some information about the tech stack here. This is our front end and that is built with Next.js, that is a React front end, and it communicates with the back end, which is built with Fast API, which is also my framework of choice in the back end. I also did a crash course on Fast API if you're interested to learn that. So okay, let's now add our first document. There are multiple connectors which you can use. I think the easiest one is just use a file connector. So that's pretty easy. So you can just click on the upload button here or you can also drag and drop a text file just on here and then it will be stored in the vector store. As you can see, I already did this here and I can see how many files I stored. I can also see the status and I can also remove that file again. I also want to show you the option to index websites and see how well the scraper is implemented. So let's use this very old tournament from my favorite game in the past, which is Warcraft 3. And here, this is a tournament called World Cyber Games. And I want to find out if OpenAI or the Langchain model behind it is actually able to find out the winner. Here are just tables and there's not so much written text. So I'm interested if that works or not. So let's copy that link. And now use that to index that URL. So let's try to connect it and as you can see now the status is enabled and in the background there will be now a task that scrapes the website and writes it into the vector store. So to see how that works we can go to status here in the indexing tab and we can see that currently it's in process and we can see that we have 16 documents indexed and and it's indexing almost 20 docs per minute. So we have to wait a little bit before we can actually run our queries against the indexed information from that website. Okay, after waiting a little bit, we can now see that we've got 52 documents indexed and the status is now enabled. So we can now chat against the documents which are now in the vector store. Okay, now let's click here on the left and we can now use AI search and try to retrieve the information. So let's ask. Who won the World Cyber Games 2010? Let's see if that actually works. So we can now see it's trying to answer. So we can see the answer and where 
the model retrieved the information. We can see it was retrieved here from that website. And here are the actual results which were used to create the final answer. And as we can see, the winner was xlord and that is wrong. Yeah, I didn't get the answer correct. Yeah, but that's a little bit an issue with the scraper and using tables. But in general, we can see that the connector was used. And yeah, to be honest, that was quite some difficult task. But yeah, I think the project itself is pretty nice. Of course, it's not perfect, but I think it works well. But that's not the end. I want to take a look at the actual architecture behind it and the ideas. To see this, we have to go to the docs again. And here is the quick start tab, but we have to go to the system overview. There we can see there is a very nice image of the architecture. And as you can see, this is how it works. So we've got two perspectives here. We've got the user perspective and the admin perspective. So as admin, we are allowed to connect different sources to our vector store. And as you can see here, we've got our applications, for example, Confluence, Google Drive, ServiceNow, local file tasks, a website, and so on. And if you add a document here, the syncing of the documents will be handled in a background task queue with Celery. And that makes our service, our API server, independent from syncing the tasks here. And I think that's a pretty nice solution. So if we add multiple documents, the performance of that API server will not suffer from that. So this will always be in the background and will sync the documents with the vector store. On the other side, we've got the user and the user wants to ask a question. So this will be handled via Nginx, which serves as a proxy and routes the traffic to the API server. And the query will now be embedded and we will make a request to OpenAI, for example, or to a local language model that does not really matter. And then the documents will be fetched from the vector store and compared and we get the most similar documents back uh, compared to the question. And this information will be displayed on the website. So for me, this is a very nice and well thought microservice architecture. And if you want to build a larger project with LangChain and any UI or anything, then this might be a nice blueprint for your next project. So what do you think about it? Let me know it in the comments. And if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video. See you, bye bye.